All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our first guest of the day. You know we don't normally do guests on Sundays, but when it's somebody as big as Keyshawn Davis, we had to get him in studio. We're so glad you gave us the opportunity, champ. Thank you for coming in. I know yesterday was a, a big fight for you, your first time co-main eventing under uh, such a big fight for Shakur, someone that you know very closely, man. But like I said, thank you for coming in. How are you? Man, I'm doing good, man. Thank y'all for having me. I appreciate it. Danny, man, how are you? I mean, uh, I know you were live at the fights last night, so I want to let everybody know, obviously, Danny is the one that set this up. Luckily enough, you were at the at the fights, and you got to see Keyshawn and, and, and set it up so that we can get him in studio. Uh, I mean, champ, walk us through it. It was your first co-main <laughs> event, right? It was a big card last night. History yeah. was made. Yeah, that joint was lit. I got a chance to walk out with a rapper, PGF Nuke. Shit, that joint was lit, man. man. We, man was, we was lit in the walkout. Walk like, 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 my family was like, like God, damn, we ain't never seen you dance, dance that much in your life. Because I, I don't dance. dance. Yeah. You feel know what I'm saying? But the energy was just so crazy. Like, from the locker room, from shit, me walking to the venue, me watching my brother, Shaku, I mean, Troy, fighting before I'm fighting. Like, the energy was really just, just crazy, you feel me? And shit, I feel like it really carried over to the fight. Like, the first round, I ran out to the nigga like, nigga, what's up? You feel me? Like, I was ready, like... But it was it was crazy. Definitely experience. I'm definitely gonna remember for the rest of my life. Now, obviously, because everything was slightly different on a bigger stage, how was the anxiety? Did you feel any energy dump, or was it once that bell rung, was it like they say, you know, you know, walk in the park for you? No, it was definitely a walk in the park. I mean, I love fighting. Like literally, like I literally just love fighting. So when it's time to fight, shit, that's what I do. You feel what I'm saying? It was, it was just what I do. It was natural. But, like, everything before that is, like, what I got to get comfortable with. Just the, the I won't say nervous energy, but the anxious. I be anxious to fight. Like, I'm in the dressing room, like, ha, ah, come on. I'm about to fuck this nigga up. Like, mm -hmm. come on. You feel me? I be anxious. And all, the, all of my coaches and my brothers just keep telling me, just stay relaxed, Key. Just relax. Like, just go out there, be yourself, have fun. You feel me? Like, I don't really get too nervous. Because I be putting it in God's hands for real, first of all. But other than that, I be believing in myself. So I just be trying to, you know, control my, my anxious, you know, not be too anxious to get in there. But it doesn't make you tired at all. And, and I'm not looking for it to make you tired. I'm just speaking from my own, like, experience. I feel like whenever I had to spar a pro that was known, I feel so anxious. And I, that nervousness makes me... Um, tired. Tired. I feel like I don't have no stamina. It didn't matter if I ran four miles every other day that week. When I knew it was a guy with sixty national, uh, sixty amateur fights and like five national, I'm like, ooh, my heart's pumping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so sure. I get a little tired. Your mouth get a little dry because of the stage. But sure. you know, I know obviously for you, you've been in at this so long. It, it's not that kind of uh, exact circumstance. But it was a big stage. I mean, the baby walked out Shakur. Thanks. You know, James <laughs> Prince obviously is there. Everybody, was there. Terrence Crawford, someone. Ezekiel you, Elliott. Yeah, everyone. Ezekiel's so it's building. like, I know that pressure, you know, no matter how long you've been doing this, you have to feel it in some way. But you performed. And you performed well under those lights. So how was it when it was all said and done? Was it exactly how you envisioned it? No, because I um, thought I was going to knock him out about four, fifth round. Okay. But it was a six. <laughs> but um, I knew I was going to break him down and stuff like that in terms of vision and that. Yes, it it, it it went my way other than the rounds. But, you know, he 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 followed my game plan. I broke his ass down, mm. and he did what he was supposed to do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And shit, that's that's just all how it unfolded. Um, within the corner and shit, though, you know, Bomac just kept telling me, man, that was a good-ass round. Good ass round. Even when I felt like, damn, I should have done more. When I sat back down in that corner, he just kept telling me, good round. I'm literally in my head like, shit, why are you saying that? It was one time he was like, all right, this motherfucker break it down right now. I looked at him. I said, he breaking down? He slowing down? Boom, Matt looked at me like, nigga, yeah, he's slowing down. He, you don't <laughs> see it? I'm like, all right, you say he's slowing down, he's slowing down then. So I come out the next round, I actually see it for myself. Towards the end, so when I came back to the round that time, he was like, "You see it now, don't you?" I'm like, "Yeah, I see it." But um, that shit was like high vision, though. You know, it, it was a hell of a experience, hell of a moment, and shit. Honestly, I can't wait to do it again for real. 
And, and what was it that made you make that decision since you brought up Bo Mack? What made you uh, decide to train with him and him as your head trainer? Uh, I know a lot of you guys know Kay and most choose Kay. Like you spoke about Troy. He, he fought before you. He trains with Kay. Um, I just felt like um, me and my brothers needed a coach. It wasn't. It's not all about me, mm. for real. Uh, it, it might look like like that towards the media, but behind the scenes, me and my brothers be coming up with game plans and how we all can become better. And you know what would be the best move for us? For us, you feel me? And Bo Mac and them had a like got, they got a whole layout and training camp. When I go back to training camp, I'm be doing the exact same thing, but like preparation, like in terms of preparation, I'm be doing the exact same thing. Like they already got a model out. You feel what I'm saying? I seen Jamel Heron become a world champion within their camp. And we all know Jamel Heron don't got the best of his skills. And this was later in his career. And then Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford starting out professionally. People was doubting Terrence Crawford too. You feel what I'm saying? Like they basically building champions out of nothing basically. Of champions that weren't supposed to be champions. So now a, a person like me that everybody already expecting to be who I am. Linking up with them. How the hell I'm going to lose? How the hell DB3 going to lose? Because now DB now they don't know my brothers, right? People don't know my brothers. So now we got two other fighters joining their stable that they about to bring up to and make world champions just like me. And they my brothers. Absolutely. Now, is it as easy uh, for you as it is for us? Like, we see you post a picture of Terrence Crawford and, and you guys are like, yeah, good work today. It's like, for me, I'm like, oh, well, whoever he's going to fight right now isn't on that level. Is it like that for you? Like, you go into this fight knowing, man, I was spawning Crawford, I was spawning so-and-so. Whoever's across the ring from me Ain't is... ready. Exactly. The reason why Shakur respect me so much, the first time I sparred him, I was 101 pounds. 14 years old. Shakur was like 114 pounds, 16 years old. And at the time, he just won the junior worlds. And at this time, Shakur is the amateur in the in the amateurs. And the first time I sparred him, I went in there on some, nigga, fuck you. I'm about to fuck you up. I don't <laughs> care who you is. My teammates hyping this dude up. I'm like, okay, nigga, okay. I'm about to show you who I am. And it's like that to this day. You feel what I'm saying? I don't care if it's a lesser opponent, a greater opponent. I don't care who you are, son. I'm going to fuck you up. Mm. That's the mentality needed um, not only to win but to 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 – Become a champion. I think these are the types of things that the fans want to hear. Do you believe, you know, uh, that this is what the fans want to hear and it's better to be said than kept it in? And, you know, because a lot of fighters have this mentality like, man, I, I do my talking in the ring. Yeah, yeah. But I think that uh, a person can become a bigger star by talking both in and out of the ring. I mean, honestly, this is my personality. Mm -hmm. Like, what you see now is what you're going to see in the future, what you're going to see, what you seen yesterday, what you're going to see tomorrow. Like, this shit ain't going to change. This is this is literally just my personality. Like some people that say what you just said, oh, I'll do let my hands do the talking in the ring. That's them. You feel what I'm saying? Like Troy. Troy is more so that person. Like Troy not saying too much. He mm. literally said that. When we, had, we had him on the show like last <laughs> you know week or the week before, and he literally said yeah. that. Yeah, you like, feel me? And he actually came out to this, this performance. It felt to me like he was more focused. He was more aggressive. He came out from the door from the jump, like Coming after his <laughs> opponent, double up real. the jab, cutting the distance well. He kept that right hand up. Uh, he looked a lot better, and he said he would too. You know, um, he he said they've been working. So <laughs> shout out to Troy, man. He, nah, he put sure. on a great performance as well. For sure. So how was it, man? Coming up with all these big names. Now everybody is turning pro. Uh, I mean, obviously it's it's safe to say that you guys are all happy for each other because you know to be children now, grown men making the type of money you do in the positions that you're in with these contracts that you guys have. You have to be happy for one another. Did you always think it would be like this? Because not every amateur turns pro. Oh, yes. We definitely manifested this. Like, like <laughs> I remember me, me and Troy was getting ready for national tournaments, and I had first moved to his area, Alexandria, Virginia. I'm from Norfolk, Virginia, one of the worst cities in Virginia. So when I moved to his city, and, and linked up with him getting ready for nationals and stuff like that. Like, he was fucking with us because, like, we from the same area, but we completely different because the cities is just completely different, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So 
the vibes were there, but Troy was always like, he was always real. You feel what I'm saying? He was never trying to be something that he wasn't. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? And um, I just respected Troy for that, for real. You feel what I'm saying? And like I said, we was getting ready for nationals and stuff like that. I just remember how we used to talk about days like this. I'm, I used to be like, man, Troy, man, we got to show out on nationals. Like, we got to show the world. We got to show these USA boxing people before we was on the team. We got to show the USA boxing how good we is. Like, it was always that. So now that we here, it's like, okay, we got to show top rank who he is. Like, it's always that. Like, mm -hmm. in boxing, it's always just another obstacle. You feel what I'm saying? And once you in that level, which we do, it's always on a high level. But once you at that level, it's always like, we got to perform. We got to perform. And it's just, like I said, it's like that to this day. You said Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, I don't know too many fighters from that area, but isn't Pernell Whitaker from there? For sure. And did you ever get the opportunity to meet him? He used to coach me. Mm. About what age were you? I was um, 2016, and I was 17 years old. This is when I was, I didn't have no coach. I was jumping from gym to gym. And literally, one of the gyms that I was jumping from, he was in. I was like, oh shit, that's Pernell. Sweet pea. So of course, when he see me working and stuff like that, he, he came to me, it was like, oh, you can actually fight. And he always told me like, always like use your jab and your speed. And he always told me like, always use my feet. Like on like keeping my rhythm type shit. Like he was like, whatever you do without this boxing career, with however far you go, remember your jab and remember that you got great feet work. Like always keep that within your arsenal. And that's some shit. Like he a great. So of course, like I remember that shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like you see, I threw a thousand jabs yesterday. Mm. Like yeah, for sure. Like shout out to Sweet P R P Sweet P man. R P that man. Yeah. Yes, a legend for real. I wanted to ask. Uh, oh did you feel any differences going from that one four rounder to the six rounders? Uh, yesterday there was an. I never did a four. You said your first fight was a four. Nah, it was wrong on box right. That shit on box rec. Box rec Lester crazy. Brown. That shit is a six rounder, for yeah. sure. You go on YouTube right now. She say one through six. Okay, okay. So then that question doesn't matter, but the transition from six through eight, how how different is it? Like, um, because again, from four. You could end up in a draw, you know what I mean? Type shit, yeah. Exactly. We seen but then that yesterday, too. With Cobb. But then you got six round where you still could get a draw, but it's not enough rounds where you could kind of take off. Mm -hmm. and, and by take off, I mean take off a round because it's still short. Or, or how do you look at it? Do you do you feel like there's more time to pace yourself in a six rounder versus a four rounder? I can't answer that, but what you was about to say? No, I, I, add to that? I was just curious. I was like, you know, some some people, some people, as far as the fight, uh, they like to have their fill out rounds. When mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. less rounds, mm -hmm. you can't really fill out. Fill out because mm -hmm. if you lose a round, then now another round you may end up in a draw. Or See, I'm gonna answer them two questions. See, look, you could fill a nigga out and still win a round. Mm -hmm. I was feeling cuz out the whole first round. I ain't do nothing that first round. You go back and watch that fight last day. I ain't do shit the first round with jabbing and stabbing the shit out of him. But at the same time, I wasn't getting hit. If you don't get hit, then how you gonna? If you don't get hit, how you gonna lose a fight? You feel what I'm saying? You could feel a nigga out and still win a round. Right. Like you can, you can make it. You can make somebody feel like you, you doing something when you really not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Floyd Mayweather. You feel what? You feel what I'm saying? So shit. To answer your question, like. Going six and going eight, like, that shit don't bother me for real. Like, give me more rounds so I can shit, mm -hmm. take my time more so I can so I can show you four gears instead of kicking into that second gear off the rip, kicking that third, then fourth. So did you feel you had to start the fight off in second or third with an eight-rounder now, or did you feel like you slightly had a little bit more time to kind of work your magic? Keep it real. I go off my opponents. I don't give a fuck about the rounds. Okay. Like, if 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 I feel like I can do something to you, I'm gonna do it. If I feel like I gotta wait to do it, then I'm gonna do it. I feel like I had to wait for him yesterday, cause I feel like if I was showing him something too early, his corner he he was adjusting with in between the rounds. If I was showing him something too early, then he would adjust it. Then I would have to fuck around, change my whole game plan, cause I just showed you my game plan too early. You feel what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna use my boxing ability early on. You feel what I'm saying to fill you out. And then I'm going to kick it in that damn game plan and start and, and get you up out of there. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's what, that's how I mean, like, you know, like, mentally and then physically. Like, I'm going to fuck with you mentally. I'm going to make it seem like it's that. And then I'm going to get you up out of there because it's not that. It's this. Keyshawn, you know, uh, I want you to talk about 
turning professional and at this point you're turning pro uh limited capacity in miami because of the pandemic right so they had a they had a social distance but at this point you're thinking like this olympic shit's over with um <laughs> and then you go on a run three three and no mm-hmm. and let me tell you i think so far your first five fights like it don't really get better miami hard rock stadium Dubai. canelo undercard Dubai on the Jamel Heron undercard. Dallas. Dallas at Cowboys. Canelo again. Cowboys Stadium. And then Number four, Loma the Chico. Garden on the Loma Chain. And now Shakur at MGM. Like, it don't really get much better than that. But you're 3-0 and at this point, and you get the call for the Olympics. <laughs> what's, what's running through your mind? I'm excited as shit, for real. Like, I won't really focus on my third fight. I'm not going to lie to you. That's probably one of the reasons why I didn't get the stoppage. Cause I had, I was it was a lot going on for real, other than the Olympics, it was a lot going on, and um, honestly, like after that fight, I was literally like, man, thank you, this shit is over. Like I really just couldn't wait till that shit was over for real, cause it was just literally like a lot going on type shit. And then the Olympics came, I was like, fuck, that shit just added on. Like now I'm kind of not even really focused on this nigga, cause I know I'm gonna win. I know I'm gonna win. But I know I still got to perform, and I feel like I did that. But I could have. I feel like I could have got that stoppage. Still, I still look at that fight like I could have stopped you. If you go back in, the, in in that fight and watch the second round, I hurt this man with a body shot, and he was ready to go, and I let him off the hook. Mm. And every time I watch that, I get so mad at myself because I could have ended the fight in the second round. But when I what was going through my mind was really just the Olympics for real, like for the most part. Me going back to the Olympics, me dealing with USA Boxing, because the, the top staff dude that I used to have coffee with and sit down and have meetings with, now we beefing. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Why? Why? Because he really couldn't control me, and I was too smart. That's why, for real. Like, I'm too smart. How did he want to control you? He wanted In what to, way? In what way he wanted to... I feel like he wanted to... <sighs> See, during the, it was during the pandemic, of course, so the world was different. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of things like they had me, they had USA, they had the team in a in a hotel. Think about it, in with the pandemic, in the pandemic, in a public facility, training for the fucking Olympics. Mm. Why would y'all have us in a public facility? That's any people in and out every single day, but y'all worried about COVID. Why the fuck would I want to come to camp? Yep. But since I since I spoke my piece and everybody else was just bowing down, since I spoke my piece, and and I guess he ain't agree with that. I guess he ain't like a brother. You know what I'm saying? Making sense to him. So what can, what what ended up coming of that? What ended up coming to what exactly? I'm I'm saying like you said you were dealing with stuff with USA Boxing. Obviously that that was part of it. So like like. Big picture, obviously you were still able to go to the Olympics, but this seems like there was hurdles for you to overcome. So I'm I'm just trying to figure like what came what came from that. Like once you spoke your piece, like what came after that? They were saying I was wrong. I should be in camp just like everybody else because everybody else is doing. And I told him I'm not everybody else. I told him I'm I'm me. And what did you do? You trained somewhere different, or you? Yes, I was training with Shakur Stevenson in a camp house in a gym that was locked down for Shakur Isolated. to train. What state? Texas. Texas. In Texas. But I was wrong for saying I don't want to go to a public facility. That's why I said he just wanted control. He ain't like me speaking my piece and being real. Actually, I was probably right, which I think I still was right. <laughs> and he ain't like that. Did you stay healthy and not uh, catch any of the virus or anything like that? For sure, I stayed healthy within that camp that I missed. You gotta do what's best for you. You feel me? I got sick outside of them camps. Yeah. When they wasn't having camp. Right. But within them camps that they was doing their camp and I was doing my camp, I was camping it out. <laughs> I, was, I was straight. You know what I'm saying? But nigga, nigga, I mean, everybody caught COVID. Like, come on now. Right. Everybody caught COVID. So it was bound to happen. They they was happy as hell when it happened. For real, for real. It was like, I told you so, this down the third. Whole time they ass caught COVID too. You feel me? But like I said, he just ain't like me speaking my piece and, and being right, for real. So at the end of the day, you still got to make the journey to Tokyo. 
you know, talk to us about the journey. Talk to us, not just uh, the fights themselves, but the experience, right? I, I can only imagine what it was like for you uh, being on that world stage. Man, that joint was crazy. Like, I'm real loud. Just, I, met, I'm, I ain't meet him, but I seen Yao Ming, son. Yao Ming was there. Like, Big as hell. Yao Ming. <laughs> like, somebody tapped me on my shoulder like, bro, look. I'm looking at his tall ass. <laughs> I say, I just, had, I was looking hard as hell. He was like, bro, you know that's Yao Ming? I said, I knew it. He just looked familiar. Like, cut really like eight feet, son. <laughs> nah, for real. Like, I see Yao Ming. Like, y'all know the female Felix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Allison Felix. You know, it's crazy. Like, I'm on an elevator going down, minding my own business, probably get something to eat. She, and I'm on the elevator. I just look like, Yo, this is Felix, yo. Like, oh <laughs> shit. Like you it's like it's like that. Like you literally just running into to celeb, son. No cap, like celeb out of celeb, K that Kevin Durant. I met Damian Lillard. Now me and Damian Lillard be DMing now, like type of shit. Mm. Yeah, he's you a feel huge me? Boxing like, fan. Yeah, you feel me? So we clicked on that. Like the Olympus was just crazy in that aspect. But like fighting, like I ain't never felt that amount of pressure a day in my life, son. Really? Like, it was so draining, son. Mm. Really? Like, because it was draining, let, let son. Let me tell you, uh, I I felt that you looked extremely comfortable in your fights out there. Cause I always, like like I said before, I'm in my element. You feel me? Like, when I'm fighting, I love to fight. So I'm in my element. You're not gonna see no type of nothing unless a nigga hit me with a good body shot and I'm hurt and I gotta recover or something like that. You feel mm -hmm. me? But once I'm in my element, I'm good. Even when I'm not good, I'm good. But everything outside of that is like pressure. Like I'm draining. Like I'm calling my brothers, telling my brothers like, like my third fight in, I got two more fights. Two more of the hardest fights. I'm like, for real, man, I just can't wait till this shit over with. Like, what you mean? Like you ready to come home? I'm like, nah, it's not even that for real. I'm having fun out here. They're like, so what it is? I said, man, this pressure hit different, son. Like, what you feeling? I'm feeling the whole America watching me right now. Mm. Literally. And I got to stay locked in, sleep on these dumbass cardboard boxes that they had to sleep well, in on. What you mean cardboard boxes? They had to sleep in on cardboard boxes. That's what I was with saying. With twin size yeah. matches on. Like, it was yeah. a twin size matches on cardboard boxes, son. I was not sleeping. Nobody was sleeping for real. I'm not even gonna be like I'm not. Nobody was sleeping for real. Them cardboard boxes was crazy, and they trying to make it seem like they gave us cardboard boxes so niggas won't fuck on them jumps. Like you can't fuck on cardboard boxes. Like a nigga won't get on the floor. Fuck standing up. Pick up. You up. know damn well after the tournament was over, I went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they was Hold waiting on. for me. <laughs> so they was waiting for me. They was, they was waiting for my shit to be Wait, over with. In Tokyo. Man, hell yeah! <laughs> Different countries. Oh, you gotta man. realize. You gotta realize. Like, not. I'm not even gonna sit here in front. Like, the whole Olympics was on my boxing. Oh yeah, it was up. No, nah, but I'm saying, I'm Friends saying, and shit. I'm saying, you talking about you went crazy in Tokyo, like after after the Andy Cruz fight. Yeah, for sure. That's what oh. he said. Cubans oh. and all. I hit a Cuban and all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, payback. that shit was like that. He too. said payback. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, like, yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, well, since I did bring up Andy Cruz, man, what was your thoughts when you heard the news that Cuba was allowing professional boxing? Shit, that's a hell of an opportunity for them. Like, I'm not going to hate on that shit. Like, shit, come pro. Come get your ass whooped. Mm. Y'all can't fuck with Americans and pro. We all know this, man. It's history. That's history. Like, they can't fuck with Americans. Like, all credit to Ugas, but Earl Spence did him dirty, you feel me? Like, that's American versus Cuban. Y'all know what time it is. You feel me? Lara. Lara, he ain't do that good, you know? Damn boy. He, he, he fought Canelo. Where Canelo from? Mexico. It was a close fight. When he fight an American, no, it ain't that. It's just They just can't fuck with us, you know what I'm saying? Do you feel that the Cubans ride that American wave the way that uh, Rabisi, before Rabisi had that loss... You know, he had a lot of back and forth with Shakur. Um, and obviously, you and Cruz are having a lot of back and forth. Um, I heard that Twitter shit was fake, too, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, it probably is, because I was wondering how the fuck is he tweeting out of Cuba. Yeah, I, I didn't know they was letting too. him use Twitter. But I do hear... So we, I blocked that page, because if you a fake page, you goofy for real. We had uh, we had uh, Rancy's on, and Rancy's made it clear that certain people gain and get favor with the government as long as they're, 
you know, true to the government and, and decide to stay. And so far, we haven't heard anything about Andy defecting. Shit, so. I did. Oh, okay. So you heard he's here already? Nah, he, he reached out to Top Rank. Okay. He reached out to Top Rank. I asked Top Rank. I was like, okay, good. Shit, what y'all going to do about it? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. What y'all don't believe in him? Uh, man, you know how these Cubans is in America. But they gave me, they gave me like some real shit, though. Not just in the boxing, how they do in the boxing ring. Because we... We all know how they do, like, pros and shit. They ain't all that good. But he was like, honestly, like, when they get out of their country, they don't really know how to act. Like, mm-hmm. they free now. Well, they never had, man. You got to imagine. But you, not, but you got, but it's, 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 it's this, though. Like, they they giving their food. Like, they, the yeah. government give them their food. Exactly. Like, everything is given. So when you come to America, like he said, they free. Mm-hmm. So they really don't know how to live mm-hmm. type shit. It's like letting the pit bull off the leash. Yep. You feel what I'm saying? So that made a lot of sense to me. Like, damn, they don't really know how to adjust to the culture and all that extra shit. Like, like Andy, you ain't ready for this shit for real, man. Yeah, you, like, for real, if he was smart, he'll just ride his wave with amateur. Because if you go pro, you don't really want this smoke. Like, fuck me. You got you got Ryan Garcia out there. You got Tank out there. Like, you got hella other fighters out there other than me. Like, Andy, you don't really want this smoke for real, for real. Mm. I, you don't want it. Yeah, it would be interesting, you know, obviously financially it would be the best thing for him and his family if he could somehow end up in American soil and get himself a contract. Um, would that be obviously a fight that you would be looking for if he did turn pro? Of course, let's do a best two out of three. We're going to make millions. That's going to be a hell of a fight. Like, shit, let's do it. Like, <laughs> let's do it. Like, for real, let's do it. Ain't no winning loss in that situation in my eyes. We making millions of dollars. But you might, I don't know about him, just because the whole Cuban Cuban government, you know, they get a piece of they of they cut. Yeah, it would all depend how he makes it over here. Does he come with the government or does he defect? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And if he defects, then, you know, he gets yeah. all his money mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he's going to split that with whatever manager he's uh, with, probably. Um, <laughs> obviously, you've spoke about your brothers in DB3 is something that we've been hearing for a while now. Um what what's next for your brothers and when do we get to see them uh fight next um keon is in and out the olympic camps right now um his next fight is gonna be a usa nationals um him just being a part of the camps and gaining points within the camps and him looking good with the top dogs and stuff he automatically just go to nationals and get to compete and most likely he's gonna be on the team um kelvin davis my oldest brother he fights June 4th in Denver, like a quick little tune-up fight right before he get back on the car with me um, late July. Um, and shit, shit, expect for him to fight. Like, as much time as I'm about to fight. So I got, like, three more fights this year for sure, for sure. So, shit, expect to see him as just many times you see me for real. So... Is he signed to DB3, or is he also signed to top rank? Uh, uh, did you get signed in, because, like, Devin puts on Amari and Shakur puts on uh, Antoine. Cobb. Is that the situation you have, or did he get his own deal with top rank? Uh, eventually, we're going to start doing things like that. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, say things that it's not. But eventually, we're going to definitely get to that level. Uh, we just so focus on developing DB3 as a whole, for real. Like, people just now starting to ho- grab a hold to DB3. Mm-hmm. So now we just trying to take it to the next level. So when we do start doing things like that, it will make sense. You know what I'm saying? We got Right now we just focus on building our foundation, in which our foundation is us. You feel what I'm saying? We are our own brand. We are our own fighter. So, um, like I said, once we get to that, you know, that, that top status, which I feel like <laughs> – it's coming real soon, especially me fighting three times this year on co-main big cards. Like, we're going to be there quicker than I expected, for real. So, um, earlier in fight week, you spoke about sitting down with Bob and kind of planning things out for you in the in the near future. Um, what are some of those things? I know one of them you mentioned was a homecoming fight uh, maybe next year. But what are some of the things that we can expect here? And it. And if it's homecoming fight, where would it be in Virginia? Um, I'm from Norfolk, so it's definitely gonna be in Norfolk, and y'all can expect that. <laughs> Don't they got like Norfolk State or something like? It's a well, yeah. HBCU University. there. Yeah, it's a university, but 
the uh, facility, it might be the Ted Constant Center. It's a newer facility. Or the older facility with Sweet Pea for that is called the Scope. Mm -hmm. So we look at the Scope of the Ted Constant Center right now. So and the MGM Hall, but that's just too small. You wouldn't even, have, they, they shouldn't even well, be looking at far. that. Well, that's Yeah, that's, that's not Virginia. Oh, oh. I mean, it's only three hours away. Yeah, but I'm saying, I'm sure you want it in Norfolk. Like, nah, for hey, sure. Man, like, I'm not, fee's a site fee. Key. I'm not, it's I'm business, not, Keyshawn. It's business, Keyshawn. They're going to be over in that site. You know, the casinos make sure you come for a reason. They get off of that site fee. Yeah, so. but they can't. They, they got to match, like, they got to match some big shit, though, because okay. I've been in the MGM Harbor. That shit is puny. Yeah, mm -hmm. it not is. Little. He said puny. That no, it's is, small. That shit puny. That's small. I think they, I mean, uh, the most they can do is like 3,100, I believe. I, I think they, they told me twenty five. Mm. Yeah, I thought I thought me. I pretty I'm, I thought Loma had capacity in there when he fought there, and Devin too. Devin sold it out when uh, Usyk mm. pulled out. Yeah, but nonetheless, um, so that was one of the things that was spoken about. But uh, what else could we expect? Um, oh yeah, I was gonna say uh, at the post press conference last night, Bob Aaron brought it up to me again, so I know like he's serious about this. Um, I said, so Bob Aram, um, homecoming, right? He was like, man, of course. I was like, yeah, sometime this year, right? He was like, no. I said, the he said, he said out his mouth, I said the first quarter, Keyshawn. Hmm. I said, so what's the first quarter, Bob? February, March, we can we can bring back homecoming. Like, that's when I want you. Like, he he wants me to do it. Like, he wants me to do it. So. Honestly, I'm glad to have Bob on my side for real. Like Bob is all for me. Honestly, Bob loved me as a person, and I fuck with Bob too for real. Mm. He keep it real, and he keep it real in front of your face. You feel what I'm saying? Like that shit. That's what I like. Keep it real with me. And but but he loved me as a like, as a person first, and then he loved watch me fight. I gotta ask because you chose to go with Bob. You dealt with so many people. So many people wanted to sign you. But you're training with Bo Mack and Crawford, and yeah. and and obviously they have put out publicly how they feel they were treated with top rank. So how are you sure it's going to be different for you, and how can you make sure you make it work and don't end up in a Crawford situation? I mean, I got, I mean, their situation was different from the get go. When you know, I was told. When top rank signed Terrence Crawford, they didn't even believe Terrence Crawford. I'm the complete opposite. When they when when Terrence Crawford fought Gamboa, you thought Terrence was gonna be Gamboa? Who fucked up? Who fucked thought that? Who fuck predicted that? Let's be real. Fifty Cent sure didn't think that. You feel me? It was a lot of like who Gamboa was Gamboa. Gamboa was fucking Keyshawn Davis. Let's be mm. real. Put it all on the table. You feel me? And when he beat him, it was like, fuck. Now we gotta put our money into him. We didn't budget for this. Mm -hmm. So it was all business at the end of the day. So a lot of things that, you know, Terrence Crawford got, he technically won't even supposed to get. But like I said, it's a complete opposite for me. Like they all the way believe in me from when I was an amateur. So when they signed me, it's the same thing. They still believe in me. They want me to be top-ranked superstar. They want me to be the Tyson Fury. You went um, pro, pro debut... On the matchroom card, you go to the top rank side in on Dubai. that Jamel in, the, in, <laughs> in Dubai, and then you come back on that Canelo on the card. So matchroom again yeah. in Dallas. Go to the Olympics, and then you sign with top rank. <laughs> Why was it top rank over matchroom yeah. or anybody else? That I, I'm 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 like shocked that Bob <laughs> offered more than. Eddie, and I don't want to know a number. I'm just saying Eddie mm -hmm. seemed to be very into Keyshawn Davis. I mean, let's be real. Anybody can, you know, witness talent. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's like Zion Williams. Like, who the fuck wouldn't want Zion Williams when he was coming out of college? You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let's be real. So, like, what made sense was top rank through the bag at me and my brothers. Like, Kelvin is <laughs> <laughs> Kelvin, I'm an Olympian. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? He getting bread. You feel me? Kelvin getting bread. So like, it just all made sense for real. Like, they believed in me that much that they put trust in me and my brothers. But look what Kelvin. Look how Kelvin performing though. So now they they not even looking at it like that. Now now they trying to put Kelvin on so many cars they can. 
to build my brother up because now they see the potential in him. Like his last fight, I was telling everybody in the top ranked stable before the fight. Nah, I'm, I'm going to take it back. I didn't even know who Kelvin was fighting his last fight. I'm in training camp. I watch him, how better he get. I said, Kelvin, you're going to stop this nigga in the first round. He said, what you mean, bro? I'm like, bro, I see how, like, bro, you're, you're, you making me want to get better, bro, because I don't, I don't want you to catch up to me. <laughs> Real shit, like, I, I'm trying to get better, bro, like, because I see how better you get. And like I said, I didn't even know who he was fighting. I ain't even look at him, his record. If he was a Caucasian, Hispanic, black, I ain't know nothing. I said, you're going to stop this guy in the first round. Fight, fight week, I'm telling Carl Moretti, Todd DeBuff. Bob, the cameraman, I'm telling everybody, well, my brother about to stop this dude in the first round, first round, first round, fight night come. Y'all ready for the first round knockout, right? Because he the first fight. Y'all ready for the first round knockout, right? Joe Tessitore, all the commentators, y'all know it's about to be first round, right? Y'all, it's going to be quick night, right? Like, y'all ready, right? Mm. What this man do? First round. First round. We not here to, like, <laughs> bro, it's not just me, like, my brother's got that shit in him too. I just show it. My brother's quiet. I'm going to talk my shit, talk a little bit shit, you know, stay humble with it, you know, be respectful, of course. I was raised right, but y'all going to motherfucking know you good at being you, bro. You good at you good at being yourself. I encourage you to continue doing exactly what you're doing because you're good at it, and you seem to be super-duper confident. You were speaking on you in your element and things. It's evident. Keep doing you. For real. Straight up. Keep Keyshawn, sure. how long do you think you can stay at 135? That's a hell of a question. For real. I was just talking to Shakur and Terrence Croft about that. Weigh-ins. We about to weigh in. I'm starving like a motherfucker at 137. Mm. They talk about me before in training camp. They was like, Keyshawn, you can make 130. Like, me, might as well grab them two belts real quick. You know? Because Jamel got his shit took in. Oscar's about to get his shit took in. They're like, he might as well get them other two stragglers. But shit... I felt at 137, I was like, nigga, I'm not going down to 130. I don't, know, no, I don't, no, hell no. I feel like I could be at 135 for the next two and a half, three years, though. You know, them, them two and a half, third year period is going to be hard. I already know. But if it's going to be worth it if I'm fighting a, somebody like a Ryan Garcia or Javante Tank Davis or who knows, when, who knows, it could be another Cam Bosa's in the future that we don't know about. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, like, if it makes sense, it makes sense. And I want to say this, too, about uh, my homecomings and my homecomings, all that shit, the plans in the future. Bob Aaron really wants me to fight the winners out of Devin Haney and Cam Bosa's. Like, he said that shit in a press conference yesterday. Mm. And once he said that shit publicly, I looked at him like, oh, shit, so you really want me to do this? <laughs> I bet we going to do this shit. And shit, if they fighting what they fighting this year, they got a rematch clause sometimes next year. And then uh, expect that. So wait, so you think you might be number three? Are ready to fight for undisputed next year? You gotta realize when they fight, it's gonna they fight June fourth. So I imagine them fighting what they not gonna. I don't think they gonna fight twice this year. I, I thought the plan was October. October is what they saying. October ish, yeah, yeah, for sure. Sometime next year. And I was not gonna ask that, but I was gonna ask what's next because you took an eight rounder co main. It's like now you're the At co four and no against a guy that's eighteen and one. So. so it's like now you're a co main is only up from here. So like, what is next in <laughs> your mind? Because <laughs> you were just the co so it's either keep being the co main or become the main event. And you know you're already at an eight rounder, so it's either Another eight or a ten rounder for a regional belt or to get ranked for a, right. a, a, a national or excuse me a world championship belt. So, what's next in your mind? Right. Um. How I feel like they're gonna do it is they gonna you know keep me on the path I am now. Keep getting these reps in. Just keep getting these fights in. Cause dude was tough. Mm -hmm. He made me go rounds. He made me think a lot. Um. I feel like I'm gonna start contending next year though. Like I said, sometime next year I'm gonna start contending. Uh, if it don't happen next year, top of the year after that. But that shit is soon. Like you gotta realize, once you at Devin Haney and it's Cambosis rank, you only fighting twice a year mm -hmm. type shit. And me, I'm still developing, but I'm developing fast as shit. And these years is low key going by fast. You feel what I'm saying? So like I'm saying, 
It could happen next you year. You are older than Devin. Bill makes that. Nah, nah, nah. He older than me. He, oh. he, he, he a year older than me. He Troy age. Troy age the age. Okay, because Bill always says Devin younger than all of them. He younger than Shoo Shoo. He nah, thought he was younger. Nah, he's younger than Shoo Shoo for sure. I think he's... Shoo Shoo old for real. Shoo Shoo <laughs> like 25. <laughs> mm. I think he it's it's just key. I think he's younger than Shakur, Susu, like Troy. I yeah. want to say even Troy by like maybe months, but yeah, yeah. They, Troy, Troy, and Devin Haney fought in the amateurs. Type <laughs> shit. Who won? Uh, Troy. Mm, Troy beat a lot of people in Troy the amateurs. Troy beat a lot of people yeah, got, in the amateurs. That's what I was saying when he was Man. on here. Troy got bodies. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Troy. I told Bob Aaron when we sat down and had that conversation for thirty minutes. I said, "You talking about all these prospects, Bob? Troy." Isley, he said, "Who the Virginia kid?" I said, "Yes, Carl Radio sit right there." I said, "Carl, remember I told you about Jared Anderson way before all y'all was hooping and hollering about Jared Anderson, and you was like, are you sure, Keyshawn?'" I said, "Carl Radio, trust me, Jared is y'all guy." Now look at Jared. Carl was like, "Nah, nah, Bob, he did tell me." I turned back at Bob, Troy Isley. <laughs> And he did a performance like that yesterday. I'm trying to tell y'all. Do you still follow the amateurs? Like follow some of the fighters in the amateurs right For now? For sure. My brother's still amateur, so what ab- I, I still keep up with it. What about, you know, Kermel Moten or what's his name out of TMT Gym? The little light skinned dude. He just won Carmel nationals. Morton. Yeah. Carmel Carmel. Carmel. Oh, Carmel. He fought my boy. He Martin it was Luther. A hell of a fight. Martin Luther? Or what's his name? Martin Luther? Yeah. Marcus. Marcus Luther, yes. They fought he yesterday. He fought my boy. That was they fought yesterday again. They fought yesterday. I think that was the championship fight. And he beat my boy again? Come on, bro. Dude, the truth. That's why I've been screaming <laughs> around here. Dude, the truth. Nah, because you know what's crazy? Marcus is like that, though. Mar- exactly. But I've been knowing Carmel for years, years. Yeah. But you got to realize, this what, you, this what y'all don't know. Carmel got a system. I know he got a system. He stay focused. He already got his, his foundation and set. His pops be, you know what I'm saying? Marcus don't have that. Marcus be okay. in and out of gyms. Like he, Marcus is still finding himself. Marcus, Where is Marcus from, though? Uh, DC. Okay. Marcus is still finding himself. Marcus remind me of myself where he just trying to stay focused. and So him competing on that high level where him not, his coach, his dad trained him, but his dad is not really a trainer. Mm, he, just, he just like scared that. to let somebody else deal with his sons. You feel what I'm saying? So if he, if he get a Carmel system, and he's already Carmel competing with Lloyd, Jim, and all. You that understand what I'm saying? This high. So if Marcus get a real, I'm not just saying this shit because I, I like nah, him. I hear you. It's real shit. If Car, if Marcus really get a system, like if he be around me in my training camps and all that extra shit, it won't. It'll be a different story. But Car, not, not taking no credit right, for right, Carmel. Right. I I took a picture with Carmel when he was like a kid, kid like. He always been like that. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? It was just surprising to me that he's actually beating my young boy because my young boy stopped niggas in nationals. <laughs> like, he stopped. Like, it was one nationals. He stopped everybody, even in the finals. Yeah. Like, he's like that. You feel me? So, when Carmel was beating, I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, so Carmel is fucking like, like, like that. Like, when, I see, when I see Carmel doing that with the head, stopping people with the head gear on in the gyms, and it be light, though. It ain't like he putting up a lot of effort. He just timing them. That's all he doing is just timing them and knocking them. I realize, dude, the truth. And he a kid. He like 16. He a don't, kid. Yeah, for sure. Don't sleep on Marcus, though. I ain't sleep on Marcus. That's how I know who is that. That's how I know him. Mm-hmm. I was calling him Martin, but it's kind of hard, easy mm-hmm. to uh, mix them two up. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I know Marcus Luther. Keyshawn, since you are, you and Bob are, are considering uh, Devin Haney Cambosos winner, I'm assuming this year you would want like a Regional? Nakatani or a Kome. Those guys are on the same side of the street. They're 135. One is a former champ. Um, I'm assuming it would be the wiser choice to go through a former world champ before getting at the actual champ. How do you see it? Um, honestly, I'm keeping it all the way above with y'all because that's what I always do. They was already trying to throw a Comey at me. Mm. Jamel Heron. Mm. But not for this for this Kome? For the, for the to the end of the year. Oh, for the end of the year. To the end of the year. They was already trying to, you know, go that route. Kome, I mean, Herring is in a tough fight. You think he wins that fight with with Jermaine Ortiz? Jermaine Ortiz had a good fight with uh, Joseph Adorno. Joseph. I don't know Joseph. But Joseph trash. Mm. And Joseph make nice for real. Joseph Joseph trash. But anyways, like, but I told them when they told, they were throwing their names at me for this year. 
I'm like, man, y'all slow down, man. No, I don't want to fight them. Not yet. Let me build myself first. Like, y'all trying to put me in them championship fights, and I don't even got that championship status yet. Let me get my fan base right first. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, let me build myself first. Yeah, I, I know I can beat these guys and stuff like that. That's not the problem. But I got to build myself first. Like, you feel me? Let me get to that, like, status first. Mm -hmm. And then let me fight these champions so it can make sense for everybody. And Bob, when I said that on a call with Bob Arum, you know what he said? What? Man, I wish all these fighters think like Keyshawn. That's a great idea. He's so smart and beyond his years. That's real shit. Like, let me build myself first and then let me fuck him up. Like, boxing ain't going nowhere. They, they damn sure ain't. You, ain't. you ain't wrong. You know, I feel <laughs> like a lot of people try to rush themselves or I feel like a lot of people think like, what if this opportunity don't come back? I think it's just the impression that you left by being the co-main. You know what I'm saying? No one, I, I didn't expect that. I'm just being real. For me like, being co-main. Mm -mm. mm. And that's what I mean. Like once mm -hmm. you hear, you could only go here. You know what I mean? So yeah, like yeah. you're co-main. The next step is obviously main event. To be a main event. You gotta be fighting somebody. Exactly. Exactly. But that's why they, they put me co-main because they know I'm ready to fight somebody now. So, yeah, like you said, the next step is to fight somebody. So we all on the same page. Mm -hmm. And they did give me no scrub yesterday. No. I just made him look like a scrub. Like the dude can fight. Like you he put him tough. in there. You put him in there with Cobb. See what he do to Cobb ass. I, no offense, Cobb. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, put him in there with, like, different. Put him in there put, like, put him in there with, with, with somebody that's, you know, that's on my level. It was another lightweight that fought before me. He fought before Nico. Let's see. Let's see what he do with Cubs. Uh, oh, you talking about? No, I think you talking about Andres Cortez. Yeah, his name, but he, he had Spanish dude. Yeah, he had all thirty. Right, yeah, right, yeah. I thought he was thirty five. That shit said lightweight. Well, unless it's not Cortez, the only other lightweight. He fought the, right before Nico. Right before. Let me Nico. Uh, pull up the card. He fought yeah, right it had to be Nico. Andres Cortez because the only other uh, lightweight was Abdullah Mason, and that he was early. Nah, Abdullah too young. I won't even throw him in there like that. He nah. Yeah, Abdullah fought second. Cobbs fought first. Right, and then it was Troy, right? It was Troy, and it was it was somebody, and then it was a lightweight. Uh, oh. I promise you. Oh, 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 Murataya, Murataya. Oh, yeah, he got Robert, he, Robert Garcia's fighter. He, yeah. he got a big yeah. stoppage though. Murataya yeah. got what? It was second round, I believe. He a tough fighter, but I feel like his opponent won't. But it's a business. Like I'm not discrediting it, cause cause is nice. He could fight. You feel what I'm saying? Like lightweight could fight. No, but I, all I'm I, saying is put Sanchez in there with Cuz. I bet he'll he'll, he'll show you some shit. Like I, Sanchez I in thought there to I fight. heard you say Sanchez might win a world title. Nah, hell no. Nah. I ain't say no shit like that. In your post fight, what you said? I ain't say no damn world title. You ain't say he gonna be a champion or something like that. I swear. Uh, I, I was uh, like, what? I thought he said they gonna see Esteban Sanchez again. Oh, okay. in the future, yeah, yeah I ain't okay. say nothing about no damn. Okay, no sir. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you know, I knew it was something around where you was giving him some like. Next time y'all see him, no, I just him, you he know gave him, he gave him. Some I was play. like, y'all should see him in the future more. Okay. Like y'all should bring him back. I think I said some shit like that. Y'all should bring him back. Like he a good fighter. Like no cap, and I, I really meant that because he is a good fighter. No, but it's funny you say that because I do see him uh, upsetting. So yeah, that's what I'm sure. saying. He could upset some people for real. Yeah. And I'm not saying he'll upset that lightweight, but I'm just saying, put him in there with them. Let's see, let's see what Sanchez to do. Nah, but shit. even, you know, to go back to Cobb, you can't put him in there. Cobb's got two fights. Like this dude was 18 and 1. 18 yeah, and 0. No, right, you know right, right. Like, 18 and 1. 18 and 1. And, and even Murataya, you can't put like even Jeremy Hill is, you know, he no slouch. You know what I'm saying? Like. Um, man, you gotta man, let man, Adula stopped him in the first round. I ain't saying, come on, man, come on, man. No, no, you, no, no, no. I was no, talking no. about, I was talking about Jeremy Hill that was fighting Mur Murataya. That, that's who fought Murataya. Oh, what was the dude that fought? Jalen, uh, Jalen Phillips. Phillips is the dude Phillips, that fought Cobb. Phillips, 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 Phillips. We needed Cobb to get that win. It, it was. It, I watched that fight. Obviously, you know, yeah. Danny is from Chicago. Cobb is from Chicago. So you know, I, while he was recover, he was he was uh, covering the fight live. I, I'm in studio with Bo. We're calling the live action here and. Uh, he won the first two rounds, but I feel yeah, like yeah. he gassed that third and the fourth. So it was I knew going into the fourth, I'm like, yo, if he don't get dropped, it's a it's a draw. He gotta yeah. either get a, a knockdown to win or not get a knockdown, and it's a draw. 
And it was a draw, you know what I'm saying? And he really got lucky because I can't argue with anybody that doesn't give him the second round. Like if you yeah. if you would have if you was would have said, listen, that's when Phillips started to come on, I could see that. But I felt like he did enough in the first and the second round. You yeah. was you was putting that thing down too when you was, you know what I'm saying? All left hooks at the end of the fight. It was yeah. just all, left hook, left hook, left hook. He fall back on the rope. Left hook, left that, that was crazy. Man, it looked have. good. It looked that that type stuff looked real good. Like special effects status, like uh Sweet Pea had it the ring. Yeah. You can see the highlight reels, yeah, man. Highlight, highlight reels. Nah, man. Well, a great a great coach after the after the fight. He was like Coach Al, Coach Al Mitchell. Oh uh, yeah, of course. He was like Keyshawn. You threw all them damn left hooks. Left hook. You should have dropped them with one of them. Why the hell you won't turn your hip into it? And what's crazy was when I was hit in the midst of me hitting them. After I finished hitting them, I was like, fuck, I should have. Sat down. Yeah. Because, like, it happened so fast. I'm just hitting him. Boom. Because I'm thinking he already hurt. Because mm -hmm. his face is just staying right there. So I'm thinking he eventually about to go down. Yeah. But so I should have just Javante Davis that bitch. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> huh. You feel what I'm saying? But, now nah, Al was right. He was like, nigga, you hit nigga with all them same left hooks. That nigga should have went down. He should have. And he, and he, he right. You I what thought I mean? he was. Because you... Like if you don't watch the fight and you just watch your, the replay, it looks like he going down. Then he Facts. stumbles the into the ropes. It's like, oh shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but but do you have a relationship with uh, the Gary Russells, Barry Hunter, Patrick Harris, the Petersons, all, all from that DMV area? Yeah, for sure, I do. I fuck with the Gary Russells. Them they they real niggas. I fuck with them. Uh, Pattersons, uh, they it's, it's, it's mutual love. Like when I see him, it's what's up and shit. But like Gary and them, I, I fuck with them for sure. What you think about Antoine Russell, the one with the beat, with the fro and all that? Yeah, for sure, he's he, tough. You think he real? He just want to. He just want to. Did he win a belt yeah, or was an be, intern? He beat like Victor Postal, yeah, man. Victor Postal, yeah. Great was it, fight. Was it for a belt or was it an intern? Like, I don't think it was for either. It was just for that. It was just, it was just step up fight big, type shit. Big yeah. jump. Postal up. had never been stopped before, and he, and he stopped, stopped him in like the last round. Didn't and, yeah. and, and, and it's like you said, big step up because before that he had not been on that level. Postal. You know, Postal been in there with Lucas, Crawford, yeah. uh, Cepeda, Josh Taylor, Ramirez. <laughs> he been there with <laughs> that everybody. Dude been in there Nobody with some names, him, boy. Russell, did. he been in there with some names. That's that's so that was a decent fight yeah. for him. Yeah, now nah, they tough mentally though. Do yeah. you expect uh, Jerome Boots Ennis to get a shot at any of this crop of welterweight champions? Nah, you don't he see should. It. I mean. He should, but that shit is hard to say for real because everybody focusing on the Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence fight, and nobody bigging up um, him right now. Like, if he was in the mix of all that, then, yeah, they would give a fight because it makes sense. But it don't make sense right now because the fans don't really want to see that shit right now. As a fan, would you rather Crawford do what he said? He, I'm paraphrasing. He was like, he's going to beat Earl, then he's going to fight his cheerleader, uh Jamel, or would you rather him stay at welterweight if he does beat Earl and defend those belts versus Vir the Virgils and the Boots. Ennises and Connor Ben of the world? I mean, I feel like for real, it's no, it's really no point for Terrence to be fighting them. Like, come on now, like, go up and fight uh, Charlie and them. Like, let let Boots and them reign type shit. Like, mm -hmm. it's really no point in my opinion. Like, what is he really gonna get out of that? Like him beating Boots. If he beat Boots, like, what's he going to get out of that? Oh, he beat a kid, the younger, he experienced. Like, let's be real. You feel what I'm saying? And he's not like Boots is on the status of Terrence Crawford. So the statuses don't even match up. Like, what's, like I said, what's he going to get out of that? Go to fight Jamel, Charlo. They, they, that's a better matchup. Like, and plus, that's something fans would want to see more anyways. You feel and, what I'm saying? And if he beats Earl, it'll make him a three-time undisputed champion. If he beat Earl, then moved up to fight Jamel. But back on Boots, uh, one last question. He did say he feels he'll be undisputed at 47, 54, and 60. Do you see that sort of talent in him that he can undispute the three divisions? Boots is special. Like in this world right now, who's special? Boots. Tank, Bam Rodriguez, mm. Anue, Shakur Stevenson, Keyshawn Davis. Mm. I feel like those fighters right there are just special and undeniable for real. Straight like that.
And I feel like to answer your question, Boots can do whatever the fuck he want to do. Boots is a big 147, first of all. And he's big. Like, Boots is big. You feel what I'm saying? So, yes, I see him doing that. Mm. That's good. That's well, that, no, I just think it's, it's crazy, right? Because right now the Boots, it's like we're seeing them kind of get those fights where it's like everybody in the world thinks it. We see it, but... He just ain't proved it against, you know, one of those top guys. He ain't got his chance, you know, to really prove it. But everybody that sit down and, and talks about Boots literally calls him special. They don't say he's a good fighter. They, they say, say he's, he's special. special. Yeah, that's very true. He's Are special. you picking him to stop Castillo Clayton from Canada? That fight is happening in L.A., I think. Uh, May 14th on the Charlo Castaño Coleman. Mm -hmm. This is the almanac. He's still Coleman, ain't he? Boots? The fuck? He's the main event. Nah, not, not over Charlo. Charlo fighting for all the belts. So don't get on his fucking card. Got to take them dates, Keyshawn. You can't he, sit I on mean, the it's, PB, it's PBC. I don't know what they got going on. But well, he's not even all with I'm saying, them, though. That, I, yeah, I feel like that's really Showtime. why. He ain't with PBC. He's with Showtime and Cameron Duncan, and this is actually a PBC card, so they doing him a favor by letting him get on this card, to be real. He's a main event fighter, though. Like, that is a main event fighter. He need a main event opponent though. Who's gonna be like you? Would you think Castillo and him should have been main event? Well, I mean, they could be promoting this man like the next greatest whatever because he is that. Like, if I was his promoter, I'd be promoting him like that. Like, shit, what the fuck? Like for real? Like, I mean, okay, he co-main, but make it seem like he main eventing. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. That's just me. That's just me, son. But. Um, what was your question though? Cause that that, that shit got me. I ain't nah. know you look cool, man. Cause yeah, he main cool. he knocked dude. He had his own cars already main eventing. So did why he, would you go did back? Did he to main Kobe? event with the Lorme? I, I think uh, no. I he knocked me machine out. What that main no, event? No, uh, no, me machine was Virgil. Um, hold on. Virgil uh, beat who, him. Who who who? My who, man's who? the Mikey beat at forty. Uh, Sergey yes. Lipin yes. Sergey, yeah. But that was a bubble fight though. That was a bubble fight. That was his only main event. That was his only the, main event. The I mean, Lorme on was, Showtime. Was Delorme a main event? No, that was co-main to uh, Jamal James. And Butayev. And Butayev. All right, well, well, put like this, like, I feel like Boots is not on the same level as me. I feel like he's a higher level than me. Mm -hmm. mm. Popularity, and um, you know, just level. You feel what I'm saying? Like, he's been pro way longer than me. I'm 5 and oh. mm -hmm. I'm still learning myself within the game. Like, okay, yes, I'm nice as hell. Like, I'm doing it at a fast rate, but I'm still learning myself. You feel me? Like, straight like that. This nigga Boots know himself. Like, he knows. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not there yet type shit. Like, I'm going to be probably there next year, but I'm not there yet. You feel me? It's real shit. Before you go, you all your family, like, from Virginia? Like, you from Virginia like that? Yeah, for sure. Well, no, 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 no. My family is from New York. Okay. Oh, okay. They just moved. My mother moved to Virginia. Okay, okay. okay. What part of New York? Uh, Long Island. Okay. Yeah, my family from New York. My father. Yeah. They have got, you, have, have got spent, away from damn taxes, man. <laughs> <laughs> have you spent time up there? Like, have you ever lived up there? Nah, I never lived out there, but you know, you always take trips back to see the family and stuff of like course, that. Of course, of course. Thanksgiving and shit, you know, Christmas. Right. Of course, of course. Well, Keyshawn, um, we do appreciate having Absolutely, you. Absolutely, man. Thank um, you. On a Sunday after your big fight, whole main event, coming in the studio, we appreciate you, you so know. much, man. And, 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 and like we said, we typically don't do this, uh, you know, on Sundays. You said you typically don't do this either. So I, 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 I know, I know uh, you know, I know this is, uh, you know, not something – Anybody could get so definitely appreciate it. Yeah, man. Now, I appreciate y'all for having me, man. I'm, honestly, I don't fuck with interviews for real. Like, I don't you like. You love my man though. Punch though. Shout out though. to Punch. Punch like always has you on his shit. show. That's my guy. Who it, Punch? Punch who? Punch Drunk Boxing. You always on his show. Nah, nah. Punch Drunk just got on my ass about not hitting him back and shit. Uh -oh. I, just, I just did a show with him because it took me like two years to start doing it. Like, but you know. You I know, fought, I fought with Punch Drunk though, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I fought with Punch Drunk. everything, bro. Yeah, I'm on that. Dude, the truth. <laughs> you know, you never, this man got like a 2021 Corvette. He driving around Las Vegas. We going to Bones Adams gyms to yeah, uh, yeah, meet smart. some fighters, and he in there working out and stuff. 
My man looking at the phone, he ain't even looking at the road. Still That's I am. three o'clock in the morning. He like DM it, like dude, the truth. Dude, I see just, everything. I just, I just want to work, man. I just want to, you know, everything. I want to, I want to have all the, all the Keyshawn <laughs> Davises. We need to get your brother. So promise us that we could get your brothers in next time you in Vegas. Um, but yeah, we just want to have everybody, got, the Keyshawn, the Shakurs. We gotta get your stable studio. mate. We gotta get your stable mate. Crawford, yeah, man. <laughs> Crawford, Bo Mac, uh, Isu, Red, Spikes, nah, all of them, man. They'll, they'll, they'll they, fuck with y'all though. They'll yeah, fuck with y'all. Yeah, yeah fuck nah, with y'all. nah. Red even told me like, man, I love what y'all got going. Y'all the Breakfast Club of boxing. Oh, that, like, that 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 makes me <laughs> smile, man, yeah. because that is the goal, man, to 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 be early hot nine seven. But I, I just Take wanted over. to put it out there that uh, we were able to get Keyshawn because. Because Keyshawn and I, that's my guy. Keyshawn, like, I and fuck with you. We appreciate it, man. We so appreciate it. We, we really your time. appreciate it. Spectacular win. Well, we're going to go ahead and take this intermission, take thank this you, picture with Keyshawn, and uh, we'll be right back. Make sure, business Keyshawn on Instagram. Make sure to follow, be in tune, everything Key and DB3 have going on. All right. Let's get it. Yo, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, Entitled, Betting Shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.